What if creating paths in SwiftUI were as simple as connecting the dots? Hello and welcome to Code Slicing. I'm Adam, lifelong coder and creator of Pure Swift UI. Let me show you something that will make you feel young as when the world was new. I am, of course, talking about layout guides, a feature of Pure Swift UI that will unleash your creativity to the point where the only thing holding you back is your imagination. Layout guides abstract away the boilerplate code associated with building a path and don't even require you to calculate a single point. In this episode, we're going to be looking at grid layouts and how to use them. As the episodes continue, we're going to be getting more advanced and eventually combining and animating layouts. But let's start at the beginning and we're going to do that right now. Right, so what have we got here? This is what might be considered a stereotypical implementation for drawing an arrow, if there is such a thing. At the top, there's lots of calculations going on. Uh, we've got um, expressions that are specifying things like the height of the first row, the height of the second row, uh, and where that shoulder is. I'm calling it the shoulder because it's just before the head of the arrow, for want of a better word. And the reason we're defining these things at the top of this implementation is because we know what's coming. Is we're going to have to initialize all these points and we're going to have to have lots of argument labels all over the place. And what we're trying to do is minimize the damage. We're trying to make it as readable as possible so we don't have to do inline expressions when we're creating our points. Most of what you write is noise. Maybe I'm being slightly hyperbolic here, but I'm trying to uh, drive a point home. Uh, we can do a lot better than this using layout guides, and I'm going to show you that right now. What we're going to do is we're going to define a grid layout config, which is going to hold the information that is going to be required to create our layout guide. It's like a template. So let's define that here. So private arrow layout config, a layout guide config grid. And now we need to tell it the columns and rows. The interesting thing about this arrow is that we've got a column at a very specific place. We can define an array that tells it where the columns are explicitly. And we would do that like this. We would say zero shoulder ratio, comma, one. That's to find our columns explicitly. But for rows, they're just equal. So all we need to do here is put three because we've got three rows. That's all we need to do for the config. Okay, so now we have our layout config. We can define our shape. We do that like this. Call it arrow. That's all we're going to do for now because it allows us to refer to it down here. We're going to put it in the same group as the native one so we can apply the same frame. We're going to give it the same stroke. And at this point, we won't see anything. And that's not just because I haven't resumed. Uh, it's because there's nothing to see. We haven't actually done anything in our arrow yet. But this is where it starts to get good because even having done nothing, I can apply the layout config that we defined at the top of the file. I can use that to generate a guide, if you like, on the top of the shape that we are trying to create. I'll show you what that looks like. We say layout guide. We give it our arrow layout config. Uh, and if I resume, we still won't see anything. We'll see a space for our shape, but we still won't see anything. Let me just give it a little bit more space. Right, in order for this to work, we need to enable an environment variable. We do that here. Show 
layout guides. We set that to true. And there it is. So that's our layout guide. And if you notice, there's a column exactly where the shoulder should be. So let me explain what's going on here. Now, a layout guide allows you to refer to points by their coordinate. All we need to do is tell it which coordinates we are interested in, and it will do all the work for us. So let's do that. How would we create an arrow using layout guides? The first thing we would do is to find our actual layout guide which is the config laid out in a rectangle. So we tell it to lay itself out in this rect, because until you've done that, it doesn't know what that means. It doesn't know how big it is or, or what any of the specifications mean until you give it a rectangle to which it can apply itself. Now, a couple of things to note here. I've called it G, which you might think is quite short for a variable name, and it is, but we are trying to focus on design here. Uh, one of the philosophies of Pure Swift UI is to increase as much as possible the signal to noise ratio. In this case, the actual variable name itself could be considered noise, because when you're talking about layout guides, coordinate is king. That is the star of the show. That is the thing that we want to highlight, that we want people to see when they're reading the code, not variable names. The second thing that you might notice is that I've labeled it as a variable and not a constant. The reason for that is the only calculations they do are a couple of constants, very similar to the, what you're seeing between lines 14 and 17, but actually less complex than that. And they don't calculate any points up front. So there's no eager loading going on here. They only return points that you actually ask for, and then they cache them. That's why they have to be variables, because when you refer to subscripts in a layout guide, it's a mutating call because it's caching the underlying point that's returned to you. So that's quite enough talk. Let's have some fun. So we need to move to the first point. And that first point, if we look over on the grid itself, is zero across and one down. So zero, zero is the top left. And we go zero across and one down from that. So we do that like this. We say path move G zero comma one. And you can't see anything yet, but it has actually moved to that point. And you'll see that when I put in the next point. So we know now we want a line. Okay. So we want to put a line and we want that line to go to one comma one. And there it is. From this point on, all you're doing is joining coordinates together. You don't know what those points are. You don't care. So let's continue. We now want to go to one comma zero, which is the top. Now, all layout guides also have the unit point named constants associated with them. So I can refer to the middle of the trailing edge of this uh, grid by saying G dot trailing like that. That takes me to the end. Now I want to go one across and three down. Let's take that one, put it there, one across and three down. So I'm at the bottom. I want to go one up, so that's to two. Then I want to go all the way to the left. So that's just zero comma two. Now the only thing remaining is to close the sub path like that. And we're finished. We have just done exactly the same thing that's going on here, but in very clear code that is easy to write easy to read, and it completely abstracts you from the idea of the points themselves and what those values are and what you have to do to calculate them. It's a declarative way of working. You're telling it what you want, not how to do it. And you can just focus on the design. Well, I hope that's whetted your appetite for more because that's exactly what you're going to get. In the next episode, we're going to be looking at polar layouts which allow you to work in circular geometries without the need for trigonometry. 
And as useful a skill as that is to have in your toolbox, you don't need it for this. So join me for that. It's going to be brilliant. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. But in the meantime, thanks for joining me. See you next time.